This exhibition is very closely related to the work of Chita del Arte. Um, in fact, one could say it mirrors it, if you pardon the expression, because it's both a wonderful um, installation and a setting for a broad range of social and artistic activities. Originality, we think, also drives business. Uh, we have to anticipate the future realities of the world and the marketplace and make appropriate kinds of responses, creative responses in terms of the way we design firms. Uh, if you really feel the, the, the concept of, of sustainability important in order to, uh, to, to be sure that we can survive on, on, on this planet, uh, uh, you have to, uh, to change everything, all different sectors of, of, the, of the life, starting from religion to, to, to economy, to uh, uh, production, to communication, to, uh, to school, everything from, from children. You can, you can change the world if, if you really, it's not possible, but, in, but theoretically, you can change the world in 15 years if, if, you, if you know what to say to the child. And sustainability for us is not about just reducing environmental impact, reducing water use, or reducing power consumption. Sustainability for us is about creating a business, an economy, and uh, a society that can continue to grow, thrive, and be successful as things change. The other design feature is today, when you have a, a photovoltaic or a solar system and, and put that up roof, you're actually installing two roofs. You're putting the roof on and you're putting the solar on. What we've developed is integrating the roof into the shingle. So this is now installed by the same person that would put on an asphalt roof. It's designed right into the shingle and uh, in, in working through that. And so using design differently, so taking the technology we had in the auto industry to integrate materials and structure, how to bring that together to make it simpler to implement are some of the things we're looking at. So how do the great changes in consciousness occur in history? My read on this is they occur along with the great economic changes. They come at the same time. And here, here's why I think this happens. The great changes in history occur when we, human beings, change the way we organize the energy of the Earth, and we have changed our energy regimes through history. When we create new energy systems, it makes possible more complex civilizations. But then it requires a concomitant communication revolution to manage the new complexities brought on by an increased energy flow through that could bring more people together. When energy revolutions <laughs> converge with communication revolutions, they create new economic moments, but they also annihilate time and space, bring more people together, and create more complex specialization and individuation. What has this resulted? A change in consciousness. This is the building that I designed five years ago in Guangzhou, China. It was designed to harvest the wind and harvest solar, and it was designed to be a net zero energy building. In other words, it creates as much energy in a year as it uses. And the idea was to capture, uh, we had pretty strong prevailing winds coming in from the southeast, and capture that wind in a way that we could harvest the building, have the structures reduced by penetrating holes through the building. There are four holes that puncture through the building. There are wind turbines that are about a little taller than me that sit in these holes. And as the wind goes through those holes, it accelerates to about two and a half times. We generate power for the building. And in turn, those holes actually alleviate the drag on the building. If you look at this picture, that's something that people used to be really fascinated in the 1990s. Uh, it's thinking about a world that will become increasingly virtual. So much so that uh, 
some thinkers at the time thought that um, cities would disappear. Well, because no prediction would be more wrong than this. <coughs> uh, we know the cities have been thriving. It's uh, 2010, that's at the World Economic Forum in Tianjin uh, just a few months ago. China itself is planning to build more cities than all of humanity ever built so far. The system that we have developed and placed our faith in is as vulnerable and as unlikely to be successful uh, 50, 100 years from now uh, as the system that we're trying at Stone Barns. It is high, literally high, on the idea of cheap energy, free water, and consistent weather. Our system of food distribution and food cultivation has not built in any safeguards to account for severe weather. It's become more centralized, more focused, and ever more reliant on consistent mm -hmm. weather. Here. A system that effectively reduces value, it creates a commodity out of food, something that is incredibly personal and incredibly important. So how do we create value? So our clients are starting to say sustainability. What's in it for us? Well, what I've done is um, tried to provide sources of encouragement, <laughs> tried to find consumer data that suggests that if you do this, and if you do it again and again and again, you'll have a more loyal and a higher value product. <laughs> The purpose of the economics office is to seek and find all the possible solutions to the heavy, so heavy social and ecological problems which are directly attributable to the economic sphere. The recognition of the right of, to consumption as a universal human right. We believe that all human beings must be recognized as being entitled to economic resources and should therefore be recognized and treated as consumers. What we try and do with financial innovation is take very scarce resources and leverage them and use them to their best advantage. And the idea is to set up the financing system so that people have good incentives and these scarce resources are used in the best possible way. So the big firms didn't create jobs, but small and medium-sized firms created 62 million jobs. I think much of this job growth came because we had new ways of financing small and medium-sized firms. The breakthrough that allowed for the beginning of, uh, of the history of what we call Western art happened at the same time as there was a breakthrough in financial innovation. It was Scrovegni who funded Giotto to do the Scrovegni Chapel. Scrovegni was basically a banker, and, and it was the innovations in banking in the Renaissance that, uh, uh, in Florence that fueled the, the Renaissance. But the perspective that we uh, see, that we saw, and we still see now, is the same one that we have experienced for the last five centuries, and that is now come to a halt. That perspective tells us Go ahead, the world is in front of you. Go conquer the world. No? But it seems like the problem is so much greater than that. And it does make me feel like I need to now go back to the office and look more closely at our Greenworks plan, look more closely at the transportation plans, and say, do the solutions have to be even more radical? Because if we can't do it at the local level, it surely can't be done at the national or the global level. It's a system problem the same way that the human body is a system and the same thing is here. We're dealing with the system and we have to solve all components. And that's the beauty of what Cittadel d'Arta is doing by the fact that they have all these components. The challenge they have, how do they breach the internal silos? The challenge for every organization, especially universities, is how do we breach the silos? And unless you start solving society's problem, you'll not be able actually... Uh, we won't be able to survive long term because government is not going to solve our problems. So let each one of us start addressing this. I think this is the greatest gift to all of us. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>